Most of our colleagues, we are still studying. Some of us had just gotten done with school. You go to school with your Captain Planet um, um, comic and you share with your friends. And basically, it's, it's, it's an interesting comic because it's a superhero who is trying to um, get the world from polluting itself. We are so excited because we had all this knowledge which you can get from school, what we call basic knowledge. So we're like, you know what, instead of for us to look for jobs, why don't we start up something which can help to change our father's, our mother's life. The way we have been seeing our families growing up, because most of us, our families are in rural areas. There was one quote in the comic that I think still rings in my head now is, with our powers combined, Captain Planet. So basically it's, it's, it's a way of combining our efforts to solve issues like pollution and um, climate change. They have inspired me. I've seen how they transmit electricity by, by using wires and by using uh, solar energy and so on like that. And I said, can I make some innovation on that system of electricity? We felt there was something missing in the agriculture sector, but not only in the agriculture sector, in the technology industry as a whole. That's why we call it agri-tech industry. 60% of the lands um, in Africa are cultivatable, so um, we have the, a huge land mass to be able to feed the rest of the world. So I think industry is basically innovating in some sector of, of the agricultural value chain um, would be the next big tech companies. I'm William Luinda, the co-founder and CEO of Aquarian Company Limited. <laughs> Why Aquarian? Aquarian, Aquarian is an it's a word meaning farmer. So the whole reason why we started Aquarian and why we called it Aquarian because we felt like our value and what we're trying to provide to people is centered around agriculture. I'm Jean-Claude Omo, I'm co-founder and chief product officer of Lorry Systems, an e-logistics platform uh, for trucking on the continent. <laughs> Lori's mission is to lower the cost of goods on the African continent. The reason products uh, on the continent are more expensive on a relative basis is because of the inefficiency of truck transportation. And trucking in, on the continent is inefficient because of a, a lack of centralized coordination. Why did I start Kwanda Lab? Yeah. Hi, my name is Israel. I'm from Kwanda Lab. I'm the co-founder. May you check one, two, one, two. May you check one, two, one, two. <laughs> My name is Mekiz James, and uh, I'm working with Israel Nishimye in the Kwanda Lab. Both you are the co-founder. Yeah, we are making transfer, transmission of the priest wirelessly from one point to another. I want to know what you say, yes? Uh, my name is Desmond Connie, I'm the CEO of Complete Pharma. So my dad passed away and I inherited his pineapple farm as their first son, trying to make that farm profitable for my family before going on to uh, pursue my engineering career. Um, and then I ended up getting stuck in agriculture. So Complete Pharma is a digital agribusiness platform that's making it easy for industries globally to source for food produce anywhere in Africa, and also making it possible for individuals to be able to um, have a farm from the comfort of their homes on their digital device. Basically, we are trying to make it very easy for industries globally to be able to source for their food supply um, without having to necessarily build a tedious supply chain network. Um, and also making it possible for in, um, individuals anywhere to be able to own a farm in Africa. So basically, we are democratizing farming to the world. 
Um, and we believe that because everyone eats, everyone is supposed to farm what they eat. Currently, smallholder farmers farm um, with no formula or with no proven approach. Most of what they rely on is empirical knowledge. Um, so someone who was born and his grandfather used to farm okro, you realize that that same person ends up farming okro the way his grandfather used to do. And what we are trying to um, bring um, into Africa is data proven and data measured cultivation protocols. So basically knowing what protocol to, to use, what farming, what fertilizer to use, depending on the market you want to sell to. We want to ensure food security. We want to make sure that there's food for the next billion population. The way we want to get that done is by, through shared responsibility. So our business is trying to make farming more of a lifestyle than an occupation. So we are helping industries um, avoid going through middlemen when sourcing for their agricultural commodities from Africa. Currently what happens in the market is um, for an industry to be able to get a supply of some commodities, they would have to come down, uh, find service providers to work with. Um, logistics is it's a nightmare. And so a lot of um, industries avoid sourcing for commodities in Africa. So one of the things Complete Pharma is doing is to make Africa very accessible to, to um, these buyers. We started this by winning a pitch competition uh, where we won 50,000 um, US dollars. Um, but then that wasn't going to sustain us forever. So um, we wanted to have a business that we can rely on cash flow till we have an investor. So basically, we, we modeled our business in a way that we could be profitable from the first year and be able to use that to sustain our growth. Yeah, we still have to do business to correct it. So basically... Um, currently, we have a team size of 15 people. Um, we are recruiting. Um, I think by the end of the year we'll be 25 in, in number um, and it's a very diverse team so we have people from different parts of Africa, people from with different disciplines. You see farmers um, working with um, developers and, and scientists. We had a, a flooding incident um, on one of our farms. We lost 100 acres, that was around $90,000 worth of um, invested capital um, that got down the drain. We ran out of money, we were at the end of our runway. It was a very difficult time because also you had, we had people who we had made commitments to who were looking forward to receiving um, their produce. And that's why um, I'm grateful for the team I have. So we kept going even though we were not taking salaries um, and we had employees, not even co-founders, we had employees who were willing to show up at work every morning at 8 to keep um, building and doing their work and making sure that the company is sustainable. About 80% of the users on our platform are from outside Africa. Um, we think there is a slow rate of adoption to technology in Africa and that's one of the challenges that we hope with good marketing we'll be able to overcome. What keeps me up awake at night is mostly climate change and the things I can't control. There were times where I got goosebumps and those goosebumps never left. It's not the kind of <laughs> reactional goosebumps. Um, and there were times where you are so happy you feel like you're on top of the world. So it's, it, we've had our ups and downs. We see success in in trying to meet um, our objective than the financial um, rewards. So we have two types of farmers. There are farmers who, could, who can afford a smartphone. Those ones, they just have to use the Android-based uh, smartphone. They go on Google Play, download Easy Greek Farmer, then they are good to go to use Easy Greek. Then we have farmers who, who are the majority who don't have access to smartphones, but they have access to their farmer groups, they have access to their cooperatives, they have access to their traders. So what we have done is that we have partnered with some of those farmer groups in order for them to provide these services on their behalf. So they can reach out to their nearest farmer group or farmer association where they can access these agric services. I'm William Luinda, the co-founder and CEO of Accordion Company Limited.
There are almost 20 million farmers across this country and uh, 6 million farmers who are commercial, who are involved in commercial production of farming. Let us just try to imagine your, your grandmother, your mother, all our relatives who are in rural area trying to do agriculture, is that they've been doing it for some quite long time, but it's non profitable as during those days when there are still cooperatives. And from our analysis, we realized that the biggest contributor for such a bottleneck is about information flow across the agricultural value chain. Our grandmothers, our fathers, our mothers in rural areas are trying to look for a genuine product. That means that if they're buying seed, it needs to be genuine. That means that they don't need any colored grain and we term it as seed. They need to get genuine agrochemicals because they don't want to just get any colored water and put it in bottles and you call it uh, chemicals. They need access to a number of services which can make them better. But they don't know where the service providers are. They don't know where the professional service providers are. And lastly, and most importantly, they need to convert their produce into money. That's market. So they're struggling to get genuine and consistent markets. So that's where we come in as a Korean through our product is a Greek is to make sure that we package all these services and make them happen to the smallholder farmers in the rural areas. We count the dollars when farmers map their land, uh, we charge them uh, shillings there, we charge them some money. We count the shillings uh, when we sell the uh, inputs because we get a commission there. We count the shillings again when they have access to market. Then we count again the shilling when they're accessing, maybe so testing or any other production service. But the rest, extension or support is for free. We, we have created a network of 520 uh, village agents. These are all young people. Surprisingly, these guys are, are making money. Those who are serious about it, of course, you can't rule the fact that you have to be serious to make money. We are talking about an organization here, Corin itself, having over now approaching to 20 employees, trying to project 40 employees by mid next year. That means that the sector is growing and the sector is working. Where are you working with? I work in these cases. Is a big farm. Mm -hmm. Some of the challenges which we have encountered across the journey for four years. Number one is. Uh, access to great talent. It's, it's really, really challenging in this country. I, I used to think about it, I used to hear people commenting about it, uh, difference between university education and what the industry needs. Sometimes, most of the times you realize that the two are not properly aligned. So it's, it's a struggle for you to get great people who can make the vision or the, the vision which you have in your head to become a reality. So regardless of any situation, whether we crawl, whether we are running, whether we are flying, the thing is that we have to continue moving forward. Your most important asset in the business is your employees. Because they are the ones who represent your brand. In, in some cases, investors or customers talk to your employee first, even before they get to you. You must ensure you have a cordial relationship and respect you know, their, their, their views. I think it's important for business owners to make employees feel a sense of ownership because we've seen that that has also contributed towards the success of businesses. You need to make sure that employees have, are able to understand your vision. They are able to appreciate it. They are able to embed it into themselves as they work. So it means you must have a team that is motivated, that is able to work together, that is able to say, we need to deliver this together and deliver it differently. So the moment you don't have a team of workers that love the business, believe in it, and want to offer it differently, you will not succeed. Health, wellness, sport, beauty, medical breakthroughs. Healthy Living cares about your well-being. Every week, connect with our experts. You can ask them your questions and get their advice. Join me, Lina Hmudu, in Washington on Healthy Living, your new health program right here on Voice of America. is about
about more than just sitting here and talking about women's issues, it's about listening to them and bringing their opinions to the table and making sure their voices are heard. Because our lived experiences, our stories, and our voices will help shape the next generation. My name is Jean-Claude Omao, I'm co-founder and chief product officer at Lori Systems. Um, as a chief product officer, specifically, I'm in charge of our technology. And trucking in, on the continent is inefficient because of a, a lack of centralized coordination. So when cargo movers are looking to connect uh, with uh, truckers, they have a hard time doing so. That's where Lori comes in. So the primary purpose that Lori exists is actually to lower the cost of goods in Africa. Anytime you need to move a container, anytime you need to move cargo, you need a truck. So you come onto a platform and you place the request and say, I'd like to move my goods from long haul for long haul distribution from point A to point B. And the client usually uses our application to submit all of the details of the cargo that just landed in Mombasa. That then enters our internal software and our command center, if you will, and our teams are able to manage that order, determine how many trucks it needs, what types of trucks it needs, and then we're able to provide this information to our network of transporters. Lori not only matches supply and demand, but resolves all of the issues that come up in the process of moving cargo from its origin to its destination. And once on site, the cargo is lifted, and once the trucks start their journey, we track all of that information and make that information available in our client application, such that the owner of the cargo is always aware of the status of their order, the status of their, of their cargo. If we're able to aggregate a lot of transporters within the East African market and have them arrive on time to pick up the cargo, then this in a nutshell will be able to lower the cost of goods because there's a higher truck utilization and also there's reduction of costs at the point of storage, handling and also on journey. So Lori solves that problem by making jobs available to the transporters so that they can submit their trucks uh, to do those jobs. Once we receive the submission from the transporters, we're then able to provide them with the information as to where to lift the cargo and all the documentation that they need. And all the while, the cargo client has access to Lori's software to track where their cargo is, uh, to submit new orders, uh, or to be informed of any issues that were encountered and how Lori is uh, solving it. So really it's about software, people, and, and customer service. You know, we were really lucky to, be, uh, to, to start the company right here in Kenya. Uh, there are other very large markets on the continent, such as Nigeria, and we've launched in, in Nigeria. So we have an East Africa hub and a West Africa hub. And, and we look forward to really scaling the business uh, beyond that. There's also a very tight-knit community uh, in, uh, on the continent amongst early stage startups. It is a tight-knit community, community because most of us are all going through the same pains uh, and so we get to learn from each other. Entrepreneurship really is about persistence and about continuing even when the, the odds are against you, uh, uh, seeking help wherever you can and, and just persisting. You need perseverance. Boy, do you need perseverance. You need staying power. And staying power not only uh, staying power in cash, staying power in optimism, staying power in patience and staying power in sheer physical ability because you've got to keep going for all the hours made to make things happen. And yes, you do need a supportive economy, but even, even economy is, is in as tough a strength as we are now. Uh, if you have a startup mentality, you, you will find the need. Hi, my name is Israel. I'm from Kwanda Lab. My name is Ndekezi James, and 
I'm work with Isaiah Nishimwe in Ikwanda Lab. Both you are the co-founder. The only 30% of citizens is only who have the electricity. How about those 70 left? Solar energy and so on like that. And I said, can I make some innovation on that system of electricity? Every morning I used to watch that uh, that National Geography Science on our TV and I've seen many people how they they work, how they move on on their activities in technology, how they've invented uh, bicycle, cars, airplane and I said why not me can I can't do that because I, I have never seen that in Rwanda and I asked my parents uh, one day why these guys are making this one why not in our country and they said the 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 man who knows how to make that one is the white man. So we say we said we have also all of us we have the same problem. Our parents is not supporting us, and no one else who is looking for us. So we have to to meet to, to to meet together and work together for pushing our mind together forward. So we started from making drone in Kwanda Lab. We make a wireless, we are making wireless electricity power transfer where we are trying to, where we are making transfer, transmission of electricity wirelessly from one point to another. So today we are, we are charging home devices, uh, which, is, which uses low power wirelessly, where we make transmitter and receiver. In this technology, from leg, they have inspired me. I've seen how they transmit electricity by, by using wires and by using uh, solar energy and so on like that. And I said, can I make some innovation on that system of electricity? Yeah, uh, one of the problems we are solving firstly is about the uh, consumption of electricity. So our government always they inspire and motivate the citizens of our country to use, it. for example, lamps that is not consuming electricity so high, and they motivate us always to disconnect electronic machines and devices while after while you are going home after a job. I remember the last time where the our existence. Uh, was talked uh, in like maybe the 2, 2, 2014, he said there is a drone and have the problem because the only 30% of citizens is only who have the electricity. How about those 70 left? So he decided to see that is a big challenge. Well, firstly, I have received funding at the first time from DOT Rwanda. They tried to to give us opportunity for attending competition, then you, after competition we, we win and we get that prize. The money we, we, are, we, have, we have got there, we have used that money to, to, to build it, this house and that one, and we have used that money again to buy these machines and these tables. Yes, we found ourselves. And many people, they asked me, Please, can you give you money and show us the formula, the formula you are using to create electricity, wirelessly? Can you give us the design you are using and give, I give you money every day, every, I mean every month I give you money or, I, well, we, or we have contract, I give you money. So I talk to them that right now I don't, have, I don't need that money, even if it's a lot of money, I don't need it. So yeah, I think on my side, are doing well but also I need uh, other arms that can help me even maybe physically or mentality. These all these things uh, we, have, we have got we have got these things from our own money and again today uh, I can get everything I need in my life not at all but most of them so like uh, basic things I need in my life clothes shoes uh, uh, transport paying many things, paying for school, I can pay for my own school fees. My childhood, uh, 
that's kind of quite a personal but it's okay uh my childhood uh, we are groomed by someone who is a little bit tough on us and uh i guess what the biggest memory which i remember is for you to come back from school and uh before you eat anything you have to first finish housework uh yeah even on empty stomach uh it's not like you've eaten a lot at school basically i've only just taken college and uh, during lunch you, you know those how lives uh how our life in africa is but you come back and you have to first do housework you have to make sure that everything is in order in order for you to eat it's that memory i think it's kind of something which gave me a lot of resilience that even in tough situations you can endure you can try to push because you have it natural in your head ever since you are your child i i used to talk to my parents that i need to study mpg after after senior 3 and they refused because i was i was supposed to study physics because i want to do something more something which is like magic looks like magic so and they told me is is not possible just go in electronics where you try to assemble and do technical things and you get money faster faster so i want to talk to tell to the their parents let their children do what they want and focus to their vision of what what inside of them and again on youth entrepreneur youth and or innovator youth in our country so what i want to talk to them is about uh, do what they want to do whenever your your parents is not with you your friends your brothers and sisters just follow your dreams man shall follow you and those guys brothers sisters parents they shall follow you another last thing is about uh, many youth like to wait for money so for me i never started with any money i started with an idea and try to implement it so after implementing my idea they've i've got money so in order to wait for money for us asking someone give me money i want to do something just let your action speak louder than talking